Hi, I'm Tessa Davis. I'm a paediatric emergency medicine consultant. Today we're going to look at a specific type of finger injury, which are collateral ligament injuries. The collateral ligaments stabilise each phalanx laterally at the DIPJ, the PIPJ and the MCPJs. The mechanism for an injury here is going to be forced ulnar or radial deviation at any of these joints and this can cause partial or complete collateral ligament tears. These injuries usually present as tenderness on palpation overlying the affected ligament. There can be swelling and sometimes there's bruising. And to evaluate, you need to assess the integrity of the collateral ligament. And you do this by applying valgus and various stress to the involved joint. You should do it both with the joint in full extension and with the joint in 30 degrees of flexion. And what you want to do is compare the laxity of the injured finger with an unaffected finger. And if there's increased laxity, then that signifies a potential injury. Remember here that you should do an x-ray to rule out any avulsion fractures because you can get these at the insertion of the ligament. Treatment-wise, if the joint is stable and there's no large fracture fragments identified, then you can treat this injury with buddy strapping. You can see an example of buddy strapping here. It's fairly straightforward and you're just taping one finger to the finger next to it. But a good tip to remember is that if the ring finger is involved, you should secure it to the little finger rather than the third finger. And that is because the little finger is naturally extended and it sticks out and essentially it's e easily injured if it's exposed. It's important to mention a particular type of collateral ligament injury here, and that's the ulnar collateral ligament injury of the thumb. And it's otherwise known as skier's thumb or gamekeeper's thumb. The mechanism is usually that it's caused by forced abduction or extension at the MCPJ. So classically, it will be falling onto an outstretched hand with something in the palm or falling onto an abducted thumb or because a ball or something strikes the ulnar aspect of the thumb during sports. And that force stretches or it tears the ulnar collateral ligament and you'll get complete or partial rupture of the ligament, which can be associated with an avulsion fracture. These usually present with pain, swelling and bruising over the ulnar aspect, which is the index finger side, so this side of the thumb. The patient will also be tender on palpation to this area. Sometimes you can feel a mass or a lump at the site of the injury and that suggests a stenar lesion. So in severe ulnar collateral ligament injuries, the proximal phalanx can become subluxed with radial deviation on the metacarpal head. Because normally, as you can see here, the ulnar collateral ligament, it lies deep to the adductor pollicis tendon. But a stenar lesion can form when a torn ulnar collateral ligament becomes displaced superficially to the adductor pollicis longus. The presence of this stenar lesion is an indication for surgical repair of the injury. To evaluate an ulnar collateral ligament injury, this involves valgus stress, so radial deviation testing of the joint at neutral and at 30 degrees of flexion at the MCPJ. And again, you're comparing the patient's injured joint with their uninjured thumb and you're trying to see what's, what's normal for that child. You can hold the base of the thumb and then apply sideways lateral pressure to the tip of the thumb. And if there's increased laxity here, then it signifies an injury. You might want to think about doing a ring block here because it can prevent guarding due to pain and increase the accuracy of the exam. Functionally, it's really important to test the ability or inability to grasp between the thumb and the finger. So you want to get them to do this because a stable pinch mechanism depends on the integrity of the radial collateral ligament of the index finger and the ulnar collateral ligament of the thumb. Remember to do an x-ray to rule out an avulsion fracture, and if you've got an avulsion fracture, you're going to see it at the ulnar corner of the base of the proximal phalanx. You might need to do an ultrasound or an MRI to identify an ulnar collateral ligament tear or to diagnose the presence of a stenar lesion. Treatment here, it could be non-operative, so a partial ulnar collateral ligament rupture could be treated conservatively. But conservative management is going to involve immobilisation of the MCPJ in a thumb spike cast or a thermostatic thumb splint. You can see an example here. 
operative treatment, so if there's complete ulnar collateral ligament rupture or there's a stenar lesion, these are indications for early surgical repair. But even in these cases, you want to get early immobilization with a thumb spiker because it's going to prevent further damage, it's going to make it more comfortable for the child who's awaiting surgical review. So today we've looked at collateral ligament injuries of the fingers how they happen, how they present, how you assess them and how you would manage them. And we've looked at a specific type of ligament injury, which is the ulnar collateral ligament injury of the thumb and a specific type of complication you can get, which is a stenar lesion. Thank you.